website. The last night was incredible. Pastor John Hannon was with us last night and agreed so graciously to stay for two nights this year at launch, and I'm so thankful for that. Last year when he was here on that Wednesday night, there was a shift in the atmosphere. There was a deposit, I believe, of the prayer anointing that's on his life. A few months ago, I had an opportunity to go up and spend a couple of days with Pastor Hannah. Every second and fourth Tuesday of the month, he does a prayer meeting at 4 a.m. in the morning. And I was so grateful that I was there on one of the Tuesdays when that prayer meeting fell. They picked me up at my hotel at 3.15 in the morning, drove me to his church. I walked in at 3.45. There were hundreds of people already there at 3.45 ready to pray. And from 4 to 5 o'clock, as Pastor Hannah led those people in prayer, there was a roar in that place that was sustained roar from, so loud you could not, you could barely hear yourself pray. And it wasn't show, it was going after the presence of God. I have a great amount of respect for certain people in the body of Christ, not because they're talented or gifted. Listen, talented and gifted people are a dime a dozen. What impresses me is character and people who are going after the heart of God. And what I have seen in Pastor John Hanna as we have become not just acquaintances, but over the past year, we have become friends. And what I have seen in him is character and a heart after the things of God. Refuge, one more time for this final night of launch. I want you to honor a great man of God, Pastor John Hanna, as he comes. Come on, welcome him. Wow. Wow. Do me a favor, just lift your hands and open your mouth. He talked about the sound. He said there's a roar. And I believe that whenever the believers come together, there's a sound that should be in the building. If you study the scripture, you would know that there's no silence in heaven. There's a consistent sound. He dwells in a sound. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Release the sound from heaven to earth, God, and use our vocal cords to be the instrument that bring you praise. Is your breath in my lungs so I give you praise? Come on, just for a few seconds, can we hear, what, can we hear the sound in the building? Hallelujah. Come on, we're not asking for anything yet. We just open our mouths and we give them glory. Hallelujah. Come on, everyone, you sh there's something should be coming out of your mouth. If you don't add to it, that means that you take from it. But we want you to be able to add to the worship. Everybody, who do you say he is? I call you wonderful. I call you mighty. I call you great. I call you gracious. I call you kind. I call you loving. I call you the lover of my soul. I call you my God, my deliverer, my provider, my healer, my, my everything. And I open my mouth and I give you glory. Who do you say he is? You are my everything. You're the beat of my heart, the skip in my step. You're all that I have, I need, and I want, and I do what? I give you glory. Glory. Now clap those hands and release a sound. A sound. A sound. You can be seated. Um, as I said on yesterday, I honor the Lord that my steps are ordered by him. And I'm so grateful to be here at Refuse Church. I'm so grateful for another brother in the Lord, someone who can relate. And I thank God for your pastor, Pastor Jay. He is a brother from another mother. Can we just give God a praise for him? His amazing wife who is consistently smiling and I feel the love of Christ every time I come around her. To all the other pastors, to all the, those of you down here in the Carolinas, 
that follow me on social media. How many of y'all follow me on any form of social media? Amen. You're part of my Saturday night devotions and all of that. In the lobby, there's a table. In the table is a book with my life story. I'm so grateful that God has kept me. Um, I was in the office last night late with, some of the, some, with a few brothers and just began to talk about how he saved me when I was a senior in high school. And he kept me um, from a senior in high school. I am now 55 years old and God has kept me. And I tell you, my passion is stronger today than it was on yesterday. The book is entitled Desperate for Jesus. Why? Because you don't want to be one of these individuals that have been around Christ or in church so long that you've lost your passion. That we have to beg you to open your mouth, beg you to come to prayer, beg you to come to church. And then when you do come, you don't add to it. When you become like that, then you become like the sons of Eli. The Bible refers to them as the sons of Belial. And the word Belial means worthless. You don't want to sit in the house of God and not have any value. So how do you keep that passion? Because life is real and life can hit you to the point that if you're not careful, it can knock the breath out of you. But you have to know the word of God that regardless of how you're hit, you have a bounce back anointing. And in this book, it gives you my life story, how I, how I got my prayer mantle, um, certain things that I went through, how God kept me. Um, I told you yesterday, I met a lady who taught me how to pray, Mother Davis, who taught me how to pray. We started our prayer meeting 10 years ago. And for those of you all that are pastors in the building, all, or leaders, remember this word, consistency. You can't start something and quit it and then ask God to bless it. When he calls you to do something, if you're consistent, then you'll begin to see some increase. Um, we have been having prayer from at 4 a.m. for the last 10 years. At 4 a.m., um, if it rained, we're there. If it snowed, we're there. If one time it was 40 below zero, we were still there. Um, we have learned how to press in prayer. We do something once a year called the 12-hour prayer meeting. And what we do is that we rotate people in and out of the building for a full 12 hours just praying. For the first time in 2018, he had me to rent a convention center just for prayer. Wow. People flew from all over the world just to talk to Jesus. And we find that because, unfortunately, there are a lot of churches that don't have prayer meetings. There are a lot of believers that say that you're a believer, but you never talk to your Savior. And he longs to hear from you. So in this book, it will bless you. So in prayer, the Lord gave me this. It's a prayer scarf. And the prayer scarves, it has nothing but scriptures on it. All the scriptures are related to prayer. Whenever I pray, I wrap myself in my prayer scarf, and I wrap myself in his word. So when he looks at me, he doesn't see me, he sees his word. And his word cannot return to him void. I want to encourage you all because these prayer scarves are all over the world. So my prayer is that every time you grab the scarf that you would feel the strength and know that you have backup in prayer. There are people all over the world that are grabbing these scarves and that are praying. And when we grab these together, you have backup in the spirit realm. The table is in the lobby. Um, there was a 10-year-old young man told his dad, Dad, I want you to get me a scarf. He said, for what? Because I want to pray. I love that. It's time, I believe that the next move of God is going to come through prayer. I need you to hear me. It's literally going to be coming through prayer. If you have your Bibles, I want you to go to the gospel according to Mark in the fifth chapter and allow me to just push you a little bit to check your circle when it comes to prayer. To check your circle when it comes to prayer. The Bible is very clear. Please hear me. Um, he literally longs to hear from you. We are good at asking people, can you pray for me? Can you pray for me? And the Bible says, you have not because you act not. The Bible says that you don't have to ask anybody. Watch me. The Bible says when Christ died, the veil was rent from top to bottom. You now have access to the throne. He says, you, my brothers and sisters, you can come boldly before the throne of grace and get whatever you need. So you don't have to ask anybody to take you to God. You can call on them for yourself. Wow. 
What a privilege that you literally can talk to God. Let me give you a scripture that I want you to hold on to. For those of you all, and I know that God's going to begin to birth prayer in you at the beginning of the year. I asked you yesterday to bring your prayer list. If you don't have a list, can you um, take a piece of paper out right now and be, just give me three things that you want God to do for you this year. For those of you all that are older, you have pen and paper. To you millennials, can you take your phones out? And can you go to notes? This bougie generation, 10 years old with an iPhone. I don't like you. Can you get your iPhones out? If you have an Android, please don't hide it. You should hide it. You will never read the word Android in the Bible. Oh, but you will found I. I am the way, the truth, and the light. Huh? <laughs> Give me three things. Give me three things that you want God to do for you this year. I'm taking my time talking because I do know that some of you all have Androids and it takes time. Because that screen is so huge and you have to type like this. <laughs> Give me three things that you want God to do for you. And I want you to hear me. You cannot be a non-believing believer. You cannot say that you believe in God, but you don't believe that he's able to do what you wrote on that paper. And I am amazed at the number of believers that don't believe. You got to hear me. You have to believe that he can do anything. How many of you all know that he can do anything? beyond what you could ask or even think. And some of y'all, you should look at your list and then you should ask yourself, is this big enough? Because some of you all, you ask for things so small that he doesn't even waste his time. Like when they sent for Lazarus, he dare not come while he was sick because he had already healed the sick. He's looking for a resurrection. And for some of y'all, he wants you to write something on that paper, watch me, that when he do it, you would say, for real, nobody did it but you. How many of y'all believe that he could do anything? I hope that you're sitting next to another believer. Now, let me give you scripture to stand on. If you wrote something down, let me give you something to stand on. Let this be your foundation of scripture. Hebrews 11 and 6. Look at the screen. It says, without faith. It is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe, number one, that he exists and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently in prayer stand on what you wrote and believe that God can do anything. Jeremiah 32 and 27 say, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Can you do me a favor? Can you hold your list up and just say, I believe God. Oh, you so weak. You, you didn't scare not one demon with that little, I believe God. Oh, yeah, I need you to say it with authority. Say it like you have power. Say it as if when you see it, that you're going to make whatever was holding your blessing, let it go. I need you to say it and let every demon in hell know that you're not playing. I need you to say it that when you say it, it bounced from earth and reached the throne of God. I need you to hold your list up and with as much authority as you have, I need you to speak with power and authority. I need you to hold it up and say, I believe God. Let's go. Let's talk Bible for a minute. If you back this up in Mark 1, we're introduced to John the Baptist and Jesus in Mark. For those of you that are in ministry, you need to really study John the Baptist. John the Baptist did not have um, a first-class ministry. 
The Bible says that he was a voice where? Crying in the wilderness. His pulpit was set up in the wilderness and always by water. Never an inner city ministry. Which means that when you wanted to hear from him, you had to go in the wilderness and deal with bugs and everything. For some of you all, you're seeking city lights, but you've been called to the wilderness. <laughs> and John was clear. He says, um, I am not he. He says, I am only the forerunner, which means I know my lane. The problem that we have is that we have forerunners now wanting to be the Messiah. And it's okay. You have to be mature enough to say what you don't have and point people to who does have it. In chapter 2, we see him operating in his call. He's literally performing miracles and blowing everybody's mind. He does it without Facebook, he does it without Instagram, he does it without Snapchat, he just blows somebody's mind and, and the buzz is out about Jesus. Hmm. When you begin to operate in your calling, people begin to talk about what you're doing. In chapter three, he realizes, even the scripture says, it is not good for man to be alone. So watch me, he literally handpicks 12 guys that are gonna be with him. He said, you 12 are going to be with me, although there are others, you're going to be close to me. And the Bible lists them, please listen to this. And then when it lists them, it says, and Judas, which means that he handpicks the one that's going to turn on him. He says he handpicked them and he gave them power and authority to preach and perform miracles and Judas. So are you telling me that Judas was preaching too? Are you telling me that Judas was doing miracles too? He was doing it, but if you keep reading, the Bible says something at one point, and Satan entered Judas. So it means that you can be doing good with God for a while, but if you leave a door open, Satan can get in there. And when he gets in there, he'll make you do some things that you said that you would never do. I don't know about you, but I, I need every door shut. I need you to shut anything that could get me out of the will of God. I need you to shut anything that's going to slow down my purpose and my destiny. If you move on to the fourth chapter, he now begins to teach. He teaches in parables. He teaches a very simple message. Please listen to this. A parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning, but I don't want to be too deep because I want to make sure you get it. We are in a day right now that we like to impress people with our deepness. And the people who you're trying to impress don't know what you're saying. You sound good to yourself, but nobody can relate to what you're talking about. Touch your name and say, just keep it simple. In the fourth chapter, watch me, he gets on a boat. This is the one when he gets on the boat with the disciples, then he goes to the bottom of the boat, and the Bible says he lays down and goes to sleep. Please check this out. <laughs> While he sleeps, a storm comes, and the storm acts as if it's going to take over the boat. The Bible says that the disciples start having panic attacks. Ah! They run to the bottom of the boat. Bro, bro, you need to get up. We about to drown. <laughs> Do you honestly believe that he would put you in a situation to kill you? <laughs> Though there's a storm in your life, he's teaching you how to deal with the storm. Don't stay awake at night. Don't worry about it. Go to sleep. He got up and said, I need peace to be still. And then looked at them and said, where is your faith? I've been with you long enough that you should know that I didn't bring you this far to let you down. I've been with you long enough that I've shown you that you should be able to release some power to stop some things on your own. For those of you that are having a storm in your life right now, whatever the storm is, I dare you to open your mouth and say, peace be still. Say it again, peace be still. Wow. In the fifth chapter, mess me up. So he gets off the boat in the fifth chapter. 
A man comes running out of the graveyard. Like, oh, why you come over here to torment me? Jesus looks at the man and has conversation. First time you hear him talking to a demon. What is your name? Legion. Then the demon says, can you do me a favor? Can you not make me leave this region? Let me stay in this area. As a matter of fact, there are some pigs right there. Just let us go into the pigs. But whatever you do, let us stay in this region. Stop. Spirits are regional. Question. What's lingering over your city? What spirits are lingering over your city that you want to ignore the elephant in the room because it's in your house? <laughs> Let's go further. Jesus says, okay, you can go into the pigs. Watch what the pigs do. When the demons enter into the pigs, the pigs run off the cliff and basically commit suicide. Stop. So what were the demons going to do to the man? The same thing that they did to the pigs, they intended to do to the man. But Jesus. Some of y'all should go into a praise because the devil had another plan for you. But Jesus came along and stopped the plan of the enemy. You were supposed to be dead, but you're here. You were supposed to be on drugs, but you're here. You were supposed to be in a mental institution, but you're here. For those of you know that God stopped it, I need you to lift your hands and go into a worship right there. Go! Hallelujah! 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 Overdose. You were supposed to be schizophrenic bipolar. You were supposed to be poor. You were supposed to be dead by now. But God came into your life. Stop the devil dead in his. Can you allow me to give you just one more revelation in this? Allow me to give you one more revelation. So the Bible says that now the man is in his right mind. And when the people came to see him, they were used to seeing him in the tomb, used to hearing him being real loud and violent. Listen to this. That the Bible says, instead of them rejoicing, they went to Jesus and said, hey, bro, can you leave this region? Can you go? What does that mean? And I need everyone to hear me. Everyone doesn't celebrate your freedom. As much as they complain, they prefer to see you in bondage. So this is why you must learn to celebrate your own freedom and not wait on somebody to applaud your God for what he did for you. <laughs> you should just turn to somebody and just stop. What are you clapping for? What he did for me? How he stopped the devil dead in his track? How he didn't let the devil have my house? How did he didn't let the devil have my children? How he didn't allow the enemy to have my marriage? How he didn't allow the enemy to have my business? How he didn't allow the enemy to have my future? Stop waiting on somebody to throw you a party. Throw your own. I wish I, I had to learn how to do that dance.
I feel like a senior citizen doing it though. I feel like I need to speed it up. But if I speed it up, I might trip. Listen. <laughs> Come on, get your Bibles. You ready? When you get your Bibles, I need you to hold what's in your hand too. And the Bible says in Mark 5 and 21, when Jesus had gone across over by boat to the other side of the lake, I was reading this and I had a modern thought. You think that was an Uber boat? <laughs> you know he didn't own the boat, so you gotta pay the right? Is that Uber or Lyft? Listen, so Jesus had again cross over to the, by boat to the other side of the lake and a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. And as a large crowd, watch me, just because there's a crowd does not mean that there's a need. Some of you all have, getting, have gotten lost in the crowd, but you forgot your need. And next thing you know, the Bible introduces us to a man. And it says, then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus, when he saw Jesus, stop right there. He slips into being an intercessor. What is an intercessor? An intercessor is somebody that gets between God and someone else. He has a situation going on at his house, but he left the problem at the house and said, listen, I can't get her to come, but I'm here for her. So I'm going to need you to do me a favor. Now watch this. Before he asks for anything, you must watch his posture. The Bible says next, which messed me up. When he saw Jesus, what did he do? Verse 22, he fell at his feet. Look at me. He got in a worship position. Before I ask you for anything, let me first get your attention. Let's stop. He cannot ignore worship because that's what he's used to. The Bible tells us in Revelation, while God sits on the throne, there are four beasts that fly back and forth. Watch this. <laughs> holy, 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 Lord God who was and is to come. Then the Bible says, 24 elders, stand up, shut up. Take the crowns up, shut up. Bow down to God, shut up, and begin to give him worship to. What does that mean? That's what he's used to. He's used to being surrounded by a sound and a posture. And when you give him what he's used to, that means he begins to look in your direction. He's not used to people, give me a minute. He's not used to you coming here, just sitting up here, looking as if, <laughs> this is nice. <laughs> You are going through hell in your house. You are about to lose your mind. You have something in your hand that you need God to do for you. It either needs to come out of your mouth or be in your posture to get him to stop, to pay you some attention. I'm going to give you a minute that everybody is on your own. We have spoiled you with praise teams because the praise team is always telling you what to say. But when you are desperate and you really need God, you don't have to have anybody to tell you what to say or what to do. You all that are on the altar are already in a good position, which means that your body posture and your words make him but comfortable to look in your direction. Do me a favor, let's take 10 seconds. You can either open your mouth or you can change your posture. You could clap, you could stand, you could kneel, you could bow, you could lay prostrate, but you need to do something to let God know that you need him to do something for you. On the count of three is on you, one, two, three. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory, wonderful, mighty God, everlasting King, great I am, wonderful Savior. Those of you that are watching via stream, Facebook, I need you to open your mouths wherever you are. I serve a God that'll stop wherever you are. Come on, just for 10 more seconds, go. 10, 
Hallelujah. Five. Hallelujah. Four. Three. I see you. I see you. I hear you. I hear you. I see you. I see you. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. I see you. I see you. And now I am ready to do what is in your hand. And now I am ready to hear about what you are holding in your hand. Come on, you all, just for five more seconds, either open your mouths or use your body to give God glory. In another Messiah. Amen. I see you. I see you. I hear you. I feel you. I see you. I hear you in the balcony. I feel you. I feel what you're holding. 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 You ready? Now just take your list and just hold it up to the Lord. And just say these words. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. And I believe that you are able to do it. Come on, here it is. And I believe that you are able to do it. Here it is. And I believe that you are able to do it. Here it is. And I believe that you are able. <laughs> I came out tonight because I need a miracle. I came out tonight. I was tired, but I pressed past my tiredness. And I pressed my way to the last night of this revival. Because there's a part of me that want to give up. There's a part of me that want to walk away. There's a part of me that want to abandon the situation. But why not give you another chance? <laughs> Come on, lift it up and say, here it is. Here it is. Now watch how he presents to Jesus. If you look at the screen, his list. He pleaded earnestly with him. My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hand on her. Because if you touch her, she will be healed and live. And the Bible says, so Jesus went with him because of your posture, and because of your prayer, I'm coming towards you. <laughs> Lead me where your issue is. Huh? Come on, lift your lips up and say, I believe God, I believe God, I believe God. Come on, say, I believe God. Only you can do it. Only you can do it. Come on, plead with him. I believe, come on, plead with him. For some of y'all, that might be tears coming out of your eyes. Come on, I believe God. I believe that you are able to do anything. I believe that you are able to do in Ephesians 3.20, exceedingly abundantly above all I could ask or even think. I believe that you have all power in your hand. I believe that you are the God that sit on the throne. I believe that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. I believe that you are able to do anything. Jeremiah 32 and 27. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Let me ask you a question. Is there anything too hard for me? I need you to lift your lips up and say, I believe God. Okay. You ready? Have a seat. We'll get some revelation. We will get some revelation. So you gave him worship. You gave him your list. He says, okay, let's go do it. Let the process, everybody say the word process. 
Let the process start. Yours is going to be a process. And I need you to monitor your steps as I'm on my way to do what you want me to do. Let's go. The Bible says that as Jesus is walking, please listen, there's a woman who doesn't have time for a process. The Bible said that she's been bleeding for years. The Bible said nothing got better but rather grew worse. The Bible said that the physicians had taken all of her money and she was at the end of her rope. Watch me. She said, if I can just get to refuge, if I can just get to where the revival is, come on here. All I need to do is be in the atmosphere. If I get in the atmosphere, you might not understand my praise, but I really don't care. She says, when I feel him moving by, watch me, I'm just going to reach out and touch the hem of his garment. Watch me, watch me, watch me. I'm just going to touch him and I'm going to take what I want. But I can't take it until he's in the atmosphere. That's why it is important that we create the kind of atmosphere because even in the atmosphere, you could reach and pull what you need. Come on here, come on here, ready? The Bible says that she pulled on him and the Bible says that he felt something leave him. That he stopped. Where's Jarius? Cause this is all about Jarius. Where's this woman coming from? This is not your parade, this is mine. But now she stopped the parade because she's pulled on him. I wish that we can get some people in church that you just pull what you need and not worry about anybody else. The Bible says that when, he, when she put him, she said, whoa, 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 who touched me? Somebody touched me, where's Jarius? Come on, man, come on, man. My daughter's homesick, close to death. I need you to hurry up. Who touched me? Who touched me? And the Bible said that the woman went from bowing down to a face to face. See, there's something about when you get what you want, you can literally meet him up here and say, you did everything. Let's talk for a minute. He's talking to her. And while he's talking, you got to get the revelation. The Bible says immediately her bleeding stopped. Watch this. And she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that the power had gone out of him. He turned around to the crowd and asked, who touched me? Where's Jarius? Come on, man. And some of y'all, this is how you holding your list. I need you to do it right now. I need you to do it right now. You're so nervous that your nervousness is outweighing your faith. And I need you to not let your emotions get the best of you, but just stand and know that God's going to do this thing for you. Come on, hold it up and say, I believe God. Now watch me, watch me, watch me. The Bible says that while she's standing there, watch how your faith will be tested. And everybody hear me, what you're holding might have to go through a test. Now watch me. How you respond to the test is everything. Hold your list and say, I believe God. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came to the house of Jairus, from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader said, bro, your daughter's dead. Why bother the teacher? While Jesus is having the conversation with the woman, he overhears the conversation that the, of the bad news that's just been brought to Jairus. Your daughter's no longer sick. What you're holding in your hand has not gotten better, but it is worse. It is as bad as it could get. Jesus turns around and basically interrupts the conversation. Don't be afraid, just believe. Now you can either drop what you have and take the report that they gave you, or you cannot be afraid and still believe that I can do what you've asked me to do. Now watch me. I'm only going to follow your next move. If you stop here, then I'll stop. If you throw the list down, then I walk away. But if you keep it moving, then I go in your direction. I need you to let the Lord know that you're going to keep it moving by your worship. Get your list in your hand again. Open your mouth and begin to worship. Keep it moving. 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 Don't be 
afraid, just believe. Don't be afraid, just believe. Don't be afraid, just believe. Don't be afraid, just believe. Don't be afraid, just believe. Don't have a panic attack, just believe. Don't get nervous, just believe. Be not weary in well doing, just believe. So the Bible says that Jerry kept walking. For you keep walking, Jerry. I got all my disciples with me. Peter, James, and John, I need the three of you to come and go with me. I need the three of you to come and go with me. Let's go. Jarius, we're following you through your process. Through your process. Touch your neighbor and say, it's part of your process. Touch him again and say, he's right there. <laughs> Don't be afraid, just believe. <laughs> Let's go. So they start walking. They start walking. They start walking. They get to where the situation it is, and there's a lot of screaming, crying, yelling, wailing that have given in to the situation. <laughs> And I need you to be careful of your surrounding. That you don't get emotional like they're getting emotional. I need you not to be afraid or get all in a panic state like they're getting in a panic state. I need you to hold on to what is in your hand and say, I still believe God. Hold it up again. I still believe God. Say it again. I still believe God. Hold it again. Say it. I still believe God. Jesus walks in the house with all of this emotion, and he releases a word. Watch what he says. Look at the screen. In verse 39, he went in and said, why all this commotion and wailing? Question mark. The child is not dead, but asleep. Regardless of what you see, it's not that. Regardless of how everybody is surrounding, I come to tell you, if you still believe, this situation can turn. Ready? The Bible says something real good. Now, we, for us to go any further, I need to clear the atmosphere for you to get what's in your hand. So I'm going to have to separate some people, separate you from some people. And I need you not to inbox them again and ask them where they are. I need you not to be asking, well, what did I do to you? You did nothing. They got put out. So last night we had what we call a God moment. And last night I stayed late. It was me. Cole, Clay, and James, who stayed here late, right? Can I get you three brothers to come up here on the stage with me? Yeah, caught you off guard. Let's go. <laughs> so we had like a God moment in the office. It was almost midnight. And I want to show you how God would change your circle. The Bible says that when they start laughing after Jesus says, the child is not dead but asleep. I want you to see what Jesus did because in order for you to get what is in your hand, I have to make sure that your surrounding can birth it. Because if you don't have the right surrounding, they'll, they will abort what you're carrying, or even if you birth it, they'll drop it. Because what you're carrying is huge. What you're carrying is humongous. And you need to make sure that you got the right one that you could trust with your vision and with your dream and what you're holding in your... Do me a favor. I just want to make sure that you're sitting next to somebody who believe God like you believe God. Just look to your left and your right and say, are you waiting on a miracle like I'm waiting on a miracle? <laughs> you ready? We're almost done. We're almost done. When Jesus said the child is not 
dead but asleep. Verse 40 say, but they laughed at him. And then the Bible says, after he put them all out. Some of y'all, you're too nice to get your miracle. There's some people that cannot be your friend, not right now. There's some people that you can't go to breakfast at, right, not right now, because I'm holding something and I need a miracle. So he put them out. Watch the circle. He took the child's father and mother and the disciples, Peter, James, and John, and went into the room where the child was. You come here. You will represent the need. You will be the child. You will represent the parents. You will be the intercessor. You will represent the disciples. You've seen them do a miracle before. So I need somebody in the room that know that I am able to do anything. And I need my believers to outnumber my intercessor. Mm. So that's why I got Peter, James, and John, because it's going to be three against three. But I got your back. Shut up. <laughs> three groups. Three groups. You got the child, you got the parents, you got the disciples. And Jesus, there's a scripture. Look on the screen, Matthew 18 and 19. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you on earth agree about anything, they will ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Can you all do me a favor? Can you all just make a circle? Make a circle with your hands, grab hands. Hopefully your hands are clean. Listen. He said, now, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything, they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Good verse 20. Verse 20. For where two or three are gathered in my name. I have no choice but to bless you because you created an atmosphere that you deserve a miracle. I have no choice but to get you up out of the bed. I have no choice but to answer your prayer. I have no choice but to increase your faith. Everybody stand to your feet. Stay like this. Stay like this. two or three are gathered together in my name. I'm there. I'm there. I am there. And because you created me this kind of atmosphere, I owe you a miracle. Everybody in the circle going to get blessed. <laughs> You're going to get up. You're going to know that I answer. And you following me because the same thing I'm doing, you going to do. So I need to blow your mind even more. Just stay like that. It's 8.57. I don't have too much longer. But I know what he told me. 
He's ready to ignite your prayer life. He's ready to change your circle. He's ready to put you around people that believe in what you want. He's not going to put you around people that's going to speak against what you have in your hand. But he's going to put you around people that can tell you what you hold and you can have it. I'm going to ask you, Refuge, to do me a favor. Can you get in groups of threes? Can you get in groups of threes? Can you get in groups of threes? I need to do this quickly. I need you to look in your circle and I need you to identify. I need one person to be number one, another one to be number two, and I need another one to be number three. Who's gonna be number one? Who's gonna be number one? Identify who number one is. Who's number one? Who's number one in your circle? You be number one? Okay, you get in the middle, and I need you two to lock him in. Number one, step in the middle. Two and three, I need you to lock them in. Number one, step in the middle. Two and three, lock them in. Number one, you represent the girl that was dead. Number one, we're about to pray that God's about to resurrect something in your life. Number one, we're about to pray that what people thought was over for you, that God's about to bring it back. Number one, you're about to stand tall. Number one, you're about to get up out of some things that you were in. You're about to get up out of some things that you thought had you bound. But God's about to raise you up, number one. Number one, you're about to be raised to another level in 2019. Can you do me a favor, two and three? Can you begin to pray for number one that is in your circle? We pray for number one, God, and we say to number one like you said to the dry bones. Oh, ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Oh, ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Number one, you represent Lazarus. We roll the stone away. We call you by name, number one, and we say to you, number one, listen to this, that God is not done with you. Number one, you have amazing things inside of you, number one. Number one, you have a future that is going to be amazing. Number one, your testimony is amazing. Number one, we pray that God keep you. We pray that God order your steps, number one. We pray that this next wind blow your mind, number one. Number one, he just gave you another chance. Number one, he just gave you another chance. Number one, he just gave you a new beginning. And for that, we give you glory. 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 Come on, two and three. Just begin to pray for number one. Like 30 more seconds. Number one, number one, it's a new season. Two and three, can you just tap number one and tell them it's a new season in your life. It's a new season in your life. And we're excited about you getting up. We're excited about this next chapter in your life. We're excited about how God is about to resurrect some amazing things in your life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You ready? Put number two in the middle. <laughs> oh, number two. Number two, number two, number two. What the devil intended for evil, God is about to be glorified. Number two, you've been hit on numerous ends. 
Number two, the enemy thought that when he hit you, that he had took your push. He, the enemy thought that when he hit you, he had driven you away from God. But your hit has only pushed you closer to God. Number two, you, you, number two, you, number two, number two, number two. You are what I call a survivor. Wow. Number two, it amazes me how his strength has been made perfect in your weakness. Number two, you have gotten bad news, but number two, you have kept it moving. Number two, you have gotten bad news, but number two, your faith, your faith, your faith, number two, has brought you this far. Number two, you hear from God so clear. Number two, I need you not to second guess yourself. Number two, I need you to understand that God is right next to you, number two. Everywhere you go, he goes. Everywhere you walk, he walks. Number two, guess what? He's concerned about what you're concerned about, and he's going to perfect those things that concern of you. Number one and number three, do me a favor. Begin to pray for number two. You're a survivor. You are amazing. You're the one that keeps it moving. Number two, you cannot stop. Number two, you cannot stop. Number two, you cannot give up. It'll blow your mind. If you stop, everything will stop. Number two, you have to make yourself keep it moving. Number two, I need you to be okay with who's not in your life. Number two, I need you to be okay with who walked away. Number two, I need you to be okay with who's been put out of your environment. Number two, I need you to be okay. Because guess what? Who left? He's about to bring in what you need. Number two, number two, number two. He's about to bring you everything you need. I intercede for you in tongues, number two. The strength of God. A one and three. Just touch them and say the strength of God. 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 The strength of God, the strength of God to keep it moving, the strength of God to keep believing, the strength of God to not stand still. You ready? Number three. Get in the middle. Wow. Wow, wow, number three. Number three, I hear the Lord telling me to tell you to have a flashback. I need you to look back over your life and you're gonna see miracle after miracle after miracle. Number three, you were handpicked you were hand picked by God number three you didn't choose him he chose you I hear the scripture for you number three I found you polluted in your own blood but I looked at you and I told you to live. Number three, number three, number three, number three, number three. I need you to get over your past. Number three, I need you to get over your mistakes. Number three, I need you to get over your shortcomings and your faults. Number three, I need you to know that you are not what you did. Ah, 
Number three, you are not what you did. Number three, eyes have not seen and ears have not heard what God is about to do in your life. Number three, he's about to enlarge your territory. Number three, you're about to do things and go places that you never imagined that you could go. Number three, it's going to be it's, it's something called favor. Number three, you have favor on your life. Number three, I'm amazed at the people that you're going to eat with. Number three, I'm amazed at the people that you're going to sit with. Number three, I'm amazed at where you're going. Number three, I hope you have your passport. Number three, I hope you have your passport. Number three, I hope you have your passport because he is literally going to enlarge your territory. Number three, I need you to open your eyes more this year. I need you to see me in everything. Number three, I need you to open your eyes more this year. I need you to see me in everything. I'm going to take you in places that you never thought that you would go, number three. But I need you to see that it is me that is in this thing. I am going to blow your mind, number three. Hey, number one and number two, I need you to begin to encourage number three. Can you just tell number three, he got you. 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 Number three, he got you. He got you, number three. Number three, he got you. He got you. He got you. He got you. He got you, number three. Number three, he got you. He got you. Number three, you don't even have to figure it out. He's going to make a way out of no way. Now get with your circle and begin to give him glory. Get with your circle and begin to give him glory. Get with your circle and begin to give him glory. We give you glory. Come on, one, two, and three. I need you to... This is the last night of the revival. Glory. 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 Come on, we're going to leave in a few minutes. For the last night, can we raise the roof? We give you glory. Hey, Bashando. In another boat, say, Ki under the other boat. I am a tando de mi other boat, Saya. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands for one minute. Can I give the praise thing? And I'm done. Come on, keep that sound in the building. <laughs> I need you to sound like what you had in your hand just came your reality.
Get your list in your hand. And I want you to let God know I'm willing to go through my process. And I'm going to press in prayer and believe God for the supernatural. And it was in my hand. I believe God. Come on. I am not. I'm 13 minutes late. I need to do this fast. Am I okay? <laughs> I love y'all. Y'all like, keep it going. Keep it going. You are not the pastor. You're not going to get me in trouble. But I'm already late. What the heck, right? God, we pray for children's ministry right now. We pray, God, that you would knock all the kids out, put them to sleep. And we pray for those that have been watching the babies that they have sweet breasts and more energy. We pray that they have a Starbucks anointing in the name of Jesus. I just want to sustain this song one, good, one or two good times. And then I'm done. My assignment is complete. I ask only one thing of you, that you keep me in your prayers. I pray, I ask that you pray for me, my church, new life. I pray, ask that you pray for me and my wife. For those that don't know, my wife's name is really easy to remember. Her name is Anna Hannah. If you can't remember that, we have problems. How many of y'all promise me that you'll lift me up in your prayer time? That God will get the glory out of my life. I feel like now my assignment is complete. Last night, God would not let me rest because I felt like we did not go where I know that we could go in the spirit. But tonight, I feel like heaven is pleased. I feel like God's going to do exactly what you have in your hand. I need you to sing a song of worship unto the Lord and let the Lord know that you're going to wait on him. Let's go. Let's go. Whom shall I fear? Take the song, y'all. Whom shall I be afraid? Take it. The Lord is my life of salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light of salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? my 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 launch 2019 has been amazing it's been a good time now listen before you get out of here there's just a couple of things that I need to tell you before you walk out the doors we have some launch 2019 shirts short sleeve and long sleeve Who's got one on? Several all down here. Come here, jump up here, Abby. Right there, come on. There you go, come here. Launch, turn around. This is revival. So, I don't know how many shirts are back there. I have no idea, they're right at, right at the muck shop. I think they were 15 and 20, 15 short sleeve, 20 long sleeve. Here's the deal. 
and I don't know who's in charge back there. They don't know I'm doing this. Just tell them the pastor said so when you go out there, all right? Every shirt out there, $12, short sleeve or long sleeve, two for 20, okay? That's the final night launch special on your way out. If you wanna grab one of those shirts while they last, and don't forget water baptism. How many of you would say in these four nights, God has done something in you that's worth celebrating? Come on. Yeah. Now for some of you, you need to seal that and mark that through water baptism. And that's happening. You can register right now. It's happening on January the 27th. And listen, last thing, last thing. We got a brand new series starting this Sunday. But if you are not following The Refuge on Instagram or on Facebook, there's a lot that's happening. And you can stay very informed about everything that's going on through The Refuge Instagram or Facebook accounts or both. I would encourage you to do both. Hey, make sure you thank those child care workers on your way out. Hug somebody's neck before you get out of here. Come on, one more time. Give the Lord a big hand clap of praise for all that.